everyone. In this video, I'm going to go through a practice problem, which is all about perfect competition. It's quite a long problem and it uses a lot of theory and that makes it a really useful exercise to go through, but I'm not going to explain that theory in this video in any detail. Instead, I have done videos before on all the theory we use here, so I'm going to put links throughout the video and also in the description below to those other videos if you need help with any particular part. Also, you can always just place a comment below if you're confused and I'll try to get back to you a, as soon as possible. So here's our question. A representative firm in a perfectly competitive market has a total cost function equal to TC, that's total cost, is equal to 1,250 plus 2Q squared plus 50Q. Now the small Q, that refers to firm quantity. Market demand is equal to big Q subscript D is equal to 1,700 minus P. So the large Q variable indicates market quantity and P just stands for the price. Market supply is equal to big Q subscript S is equal to 50 plus 2P. Now I'm just going to go straight to do A first. And in that question, we're asked at the current market price, would the firm operate in the short run? Now, my advice about how to approach these types of questions, which are quite large, I'm not sure if you need advice, but just in case you feel overwhelmed with these sorts of questions and don't know where to start, my strategy in these cases is just to sketch out roughly what we know from the question first. That usually gives me a clue on how to proceed and it helps sort out our information. So we do know the total cost function for the firm, but total cost isn't typically part of our diagrams in perfect competition, though it is useful to note that we can get our average and marginal firm cost functions from here later. More obvious to me is this market demand curve. And actually, if we sketch it out, it will look something like this. It has a downward sloping orientation. In fact, I can see from the function that the slope will be equal to negative one. I can also see from the question, our market supply, it will look something like this. It has an upward sloping orientation. In fact, I can see from the function that the slope will be equal to one half. Now I'm not going to add in labels for my axis intercepts or anything like that, just because the question doesn't ask for a diagram. I'm just sketching stuff out at this point to see visually what information I have. And one immediate thing that you can see from this sketch is that we're able, with the information that we have, to find the market price, which is found at the intersection of market demand and market supply. And actually working with market price is part of part A, so I'm just going to go ahead and find that price. Now our equilibrium is found by setting demand equal to supply. Substituting in our functions, we get 1700 minus P is equal to 50 plus 2P. Adding P to both sides, I get 1700 is equal to 50 plus 3P. Taking 50 away from both sides, I get 1650 is equal to 3P. Dividing both sides by 3, I get P is equal to 550. Now this will be our equilibrium price, so it's P star, and I'm going to put that in my diagram here. Now with this information, I'm also going to find our equilibrium quantity in the market, which is Q star. We don't need this for A, but I will need it later, so I'm just going to go ahead and find it now. To find Q star, we're just going to substitute the price of 550 into either my demand or supply equations because they're equal to one another at that point, it doesn't matter. I choose demand so I get big Q subscript D is equal to 1700 minus 550 and I get quantity demanded is equal to 1150 and this will be our Q star, it's our equilibrium market quantity. So I can put that on my diagram like this. Now part A specifically asks us whether the firm operates in the short run or not. Now the requirements for the short run is that the price must be greater than or equal to average variable cost, that's AVC, otherwise the firm is going to shut down. To check this condition, we're going to then need to find our average variable cost function and then evaluate average variable cost at the firm output, which is small q star. I'll find AVC first. So AVC is equal to variable costs, that's VC, divided by Q. 
Now, variable costs is just going to be equal to those terms within our total cost function that include a quantity variable. So in our example here, variable cost would be then 2q squared plus 50q. Average variable costs are then equal to well, 2q squared plus 50q all over q, which is equal to 2q plus 50. Now it's worth just sketching this on a separate diagram here and I'm going to put it next to our market diagram sketch. And so on these axes, I'm going to represent what's happening at the firm level. So average variable costs, which is 2Q plus 50, it will be a linear function with a cost axis intercept of 50 and a slope of two. We then need to find out our firm output when the price is 550. In perfect competition, the firm will set their quantity small q such that price is equal to marginal cost mc. We have our price, but we do need to find marginal cost, which is just equal to the derivative of total cost with respect to quantity. So taking the derivative here, we look to our total cost function, the constant drops out completely. The two comes out the front here and multiplies two, so we get four Q. And the Q on 50 Q will drop out because we effectively get 50 times Q to the power of zero, which is just equal to 50. So marginal cost is equal to four Q plus 50. On our diagram here, marginal cost is then a straight line with a cost axis intercept of 50 and a slope of four. So it actually lies above our average variable cost curve that we drew before, but it has the same axis intercept. Now setting price equal to marginal cost, we get 550, that's our price, and marginal cost 4Q plus 50. Solving for Q, we can take 50 away from both sides and I get 500 is equal to 4Q. Dividing both sides by four, I get small q is equal to 125. And that's q star, that's our firm equilibrium output. On our diagram, we represent this as follows. We draw the price line out from the market until it hits our marginal cost curve. We draw down and that quantity is 125. The next step is to find our average variable costs associated with producing 125 units. And we find that by substituting Q is equal to 125 into our average variable cost function. So we get AVC is equal to two times 125 plus 50, which is 250 plus 50, so just equal to 300. So we can check back to our condition now about whether or not price is greater than or equal to average variable costs. Well, our price is 550 and our AVC is 300 and 550 is greater than 300. So then our price is greater than average variable cost. So in our market here, the firm is not going to shut down at that price of 550. Graphically, it looks something like this. You can see that when the firm produces 125 units, the average variable cost is 300 and this is less than the price of 550. So that's part A, the firm is not going to shut down in the short run. And actually we've done a lot of the grunt work here, so we should be able to get through most of the other parts of the question relatively quickly. In part B, and I've just cleared some space here, we're asked about the profit. Now profit pi is equal to total revenue, that's TR minus total cost. Total revenue is just equal to price times quantity, and total costs we just get from the question, so 1,250 plus 2Q squared plus 50Q. Now we substitute in the price of 550 here and a quantity of 125. So I get 550 times 125 minus 1,250 plus two times 125 squared plus 50 times 125. Now I just solved for the following on a calculator. So 550 times 125 is 68,750 and we get 1,250 plus 31,250 plus 6,250 in our brackets. And this all reduces to 68,750 minus 38,750, so 30,000 all up. And that's our firm profit in this industry when price is 550. And actually we can tell from this outcome because profits are positive that this is not a long run equilibrium. A long run equilibrium is characterized by firms making zero profits. 
Now, in part C, we're asked about how many firms are in the industry. Well, we know that each firm makes 125 units, and we know that the market produces 1,150 units in total. And what we do then to find the number of firms is we divide our market output, that's big Q, by firm output, small Q. So that must be 1,150 divided by 125 is equal to 9.2 firms. In parts D, E and F, we're going to focus on the long run equilibrium in this market. So I've taken the short run diagrams away and also most of the working. I have left our marginal cost function here and I will introduce some more diagrams later, but I did need some space for my working. In D, we're asked about firm output in the long run. Now, a long run equilibrium is characterized by the price being equal to the minimum of average total cost. And this actually means that we find our firm output by finding the quantity that corresponds to the minimum of average total cost. So the situation looks like this. In the long run, price is equal to marginal cost, but also equal to average total cost, and that guarantees zero profits. But that point is actually at the minimum of average total cost since marginal cost intersects average total cost at its minimum. Now to find this point, we do need to find our average total cost function, that's ATC, uh, which is just total cost divided by Q. So substituting in our total cost function from our question, we get 1,250 plus 2Q squared plus 50Q, all divided by Q. This reduces to 1,250 over Q plus 2Q plus 50. We find the minimum of average total cost by finding where marginal cost is equal to average total cost, since as I said before, marginal cost intersects average total cost at its minimum. We did find our marginal cost function before it's here. So MC equal to ATC is equal to 4Q plus 50 is equal to 1,250 over Q plus 2Q plus 50. We can take our 50s away from both sides. And taking away 2Q away from each side as well, we get 2Q is equal to 1,250 over Q. Multiplying both sides by Q, I get 2Q squared is equal to 1,250. Divide both sides by 2, and I get Q squared is equal to 625. Taking the square root, I get Q is equal to plus or minus 25. Now we're just going to take the positive as the answer. There's no negative quantities in our, in our model. So that's our firm output when average total cost is at a minimum. And I'm just going to put a subscript LR standing for long run. That's our long run equilibrium quantity for the firm. And I've also put that on my diagram. We can use this result then to find E, which asks us for the long run price. And I'm just going to use the fact that in perfect competition, price is equal to marginal cost. Now marginal cost is 4Q plus 50, substituting in 25, we get that price is equal to 150. That's our long run equilibrium price and I'm going to put this on our diagram here. We could have substituted 25 into our average total cost function. We would have gotten the same result. They're all equal to one another at this point. Now our last part in F just asks about the number of firms in the long run in the industry. Now, as before, we find the number of firms by taking market quantity and we divide by firm quantity, but this time we're just going to use our long run equilibrium results. We do have small Q, that's 25, but we don't have large Q, our market output in the long run. And what we're going to do is actually use our demand curve to find this figure. So just to recap, because students get confused at this point, I'm going to go to another screen and review what's happened and what's happening using some diagrams. So if you recall in parts A to C, we found that the equilibrium price was 550, market output was 1,150 and firm quantity was 125. Each firm was making a positive profit of 30,000 and there were 9.2 firms in the industry. This was a short run situation because of those positive profits. In parts D to F, we're thinking about the long run. Now, one characteristic of the long run is that firms can enter or exit the market freely. Now, this movement of the firm is going to shift our market supply curve, which in turn leads to an adjustment of the price towards the long run equilibrium where price is equal to the minimum of average total cost. 
So in our case, our firms were making positive profits. And this means that in the long run, new firms will come into the industry to take advantage of those positive profits. This shifts market supply to the right. So we get an increase in the market supply because of that influx of firms. And this itself puts a downward pressure on the equilibrium price. Our supply will shift and shift until the price exactly corresponds to the minimum of average total cost. So like this, I've put in an average total cost curve here. And you can see that our new long run equilibrium, well, it's still found at the intersection of market demand and market supply, except our supply is a new supply curve S1. At this point, our price is exactly equal to the minimum of average total cost. We found that price is equal to 150. And at this point, we've also found that each firm makes 25 units. Now, it is interesting just to say that in comparison to the short run where the firm made 125 units, each firm in this industry is now producing less. And this makes sense. The price is lower in the market, so there is less incentive for firms to produce. But you can hopefully see on the left-hand side here that our market output, that's Q star long run, has increased relative to the short run equilibrium that we found in A to C. And that's due to the influx of all of the new firms. Now this market quantity is what we need in order to answer part F, which asks about the number of firms. We can't use the market supply equation that was given to us in the question to find market output. That's this curve here, S, since this curve has moved as part of the adjustment to our long run equilibrium. We don't know the equation that describes our new supply S1, but we can use our market demand curve. We have that equation for this curve and the adjustment towards the long run price has not shifted market demand at all. So that's what we're going to do. We use our market demand and we substitute in that long run equilibrium price of 150 and we get 1700 minus 150 is equal to 1550. The number of firms in the long run then is equal to 1,550 divided by 25, which is equal to 62. So there are 62 firms in the industry in the long run. So that's it. It's a pretty heavy question. There are more things that you can do with questions like this. You could draw the diagrams out really, really nicely with all of your intercepts and show profit graphically, for instance. If the question had asked me for a diagram, I would have been more careful in that respect or they might ask you to construct our market demand or market supply from our individual demand or our individual supply curves. So there's lots of sorts of things that you can get, but, but hopefully this video still helped you. We did go through quite a lot. So that's it. If the video did help, and if you haven't yet subscribed, please like and subscribe. I also have a website now. There's not much on it at the moment at the time of filming this, but I plan to put up more. So uh, visit it if you like. Hope you guys are keeping happy and safe. Have a great day, everyone.